Hi everybody, Monroe Live here at Lawrence Tech University in the parking lot for some amazing technology demonstration here with Dan Radomsky from the Accelerator. And Dan, can you give me a, just a brief introduction of what's going on today? Yeah, today's uh, really a demonstration of autonomous systems, land, air, sea, all products that are developed right here in Michigan, uh, as well as companies that are developing key components like batteries, motors that go into autonomous systems. So this is everything from autonomous air vehicle systems, ground vehicle systems, as well as water, surface, uh, underwater drones. Perfect. There's going to be a ton of demonstrations today. We're going to take some some um, great video of the technology. We'll be able to talk to some of the providers here today. So be on the lookout for some of these people in your local area. It's really exciting times for Michigan and Lawrence Tech and the Accelerator. Dan, thank you. You're doing awesome work. Thank you. We're here with John Romanelli from ASX. Got some very interesting drone technology. Yeah. So John, I want you to kind of give us an overview of yeah. what you have going on here and how is this technology important? Yeah, thanks Sue. Uh, well, uh, John Romanelli, I'm the founder and CEO of ASX in Detroit. And uh, one of our products is a universal traffic management system. And essentially what we're seeing here is we've got about 1.2 million drones in the sky today, about, uh, about 800,000 ground robots, sidewalk robots, running around the public square. And over the next three to five years, we're gonna see that number grow to about eight to 10 million robots operating in the public square. And the question becomes like, how do you manage robot traffic? How do you integrate robot traffic into society so it's safe, right? So we can license them, we can authenticate them, we can monitor them, we can route them, like where they can go, where they can't go, right? We can actually produce, you know, broadcasts uh, no fly zones or no operational zones because robots are great, but we want to be able to manage them, right? Okay. And if there's an emergency, we need to reroute them. So there's no universal traffic management system available to sort of harmonize the integration of robots into society. Um, not only that, but we have to have a way to actively manage collision avoidance, sequence and separate robot traffic from not robot traffic. Okay. Cities and states across the nation have been deploying connected vehicle technology to improve traffic flow, uh, reduce collisions, intersection collisions, uh, facilitate safety messaging for emergency response vehicles. And it's being unused right now by the automotive OEMs. Okay. So we said, okay, we've got hundreds of millions invested. How do we repurpose that technology to manage robot traffic? to okay. facilitate active collision avoidance, authentication, monitoring, trafficking, uh, tracking, licensing. And turns out it was a good idea. And we got a contract with the U.S. Air Force through an SCTR. We got a phase two uh, SCTR contract signed yes, last week for 1.8. Uh, we, we got two MEDC contracts for 340,000 this year. So we're doing a deployment throughout Southeast Michigan, all along Woodward, uh, Corktown, Macomb County, looks like Oakland County's in the pipe. Okay. And uh, we're gonna look to scale this nationally, globally. Okay. And um, yeah, it's fun. So it sounds amazing. And this is your, your product here? So this is actually a mule. This okay. is actually an aircraft uh, that was built in the US by a company called FreeFly. What's on here is our onboard computer. Excellent. So the onboard computer is a Linux computer with a precision navigation device, as well as a 5859 spectrum radio. Okay. Provides vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure communication. So on every roadside intersection, in Macomb County currently, in some Detroit, some Oakland, is this radio. This is a roadside unit that is protected spectrum that basically communicates with this vehicle. Okay. We can send routes to this vehicle and tell it okay. where to go and where it can't go. Okay. Right. So here is a demonstration that we did just yesterday at Grayling uh, Army uh, National Guard Base. And what we have here is about four drones, multiple ground robots, marine vessels, all being anchored by a uh, common operating picture. So the commanders can basically see where their assets are, manage deconfliction, send a route, send a message to any particular vehicle operator in real time. That's amazing technology. With sub one millisecond latency. That is amazing technology. Yeah. yeah. And so um, beyond beyond this, if, if you had to project what the next step would be, do you know where you would be going? 100%. 
So um, right now we're in the process of taking our onboard computer and making different flavors of it. So lightweight, uh, low cost. Yeah. We need this thing to be around $25 to $50. Okay. Right? Because we want it in everything that okay. moves. Everything that moves should be... So this is the digital license plate of the future. Okay. Right? It comes with a computer. Okay. So now we can... Robots can access secure environments. They can make a payment mm -hmm. if they need to yeah. make a payment. Uh, but we've got a version of this. It's one inches, one inches wide by two inches long. Uh, we're actually working with the former head of OnStar. Excellent. Uh, his name is Dave Acton. I don't okay. know if you know Dave. No, but... So he was the chief engineer at GM. Okay. Dave Acton is our boss uh, on the miniaturization of this. Okay. So we've uh, recruited him. And uh, yeah, we're excited about it. So small, light, yep. low cost onboard device Thanks, that we can uh, basically sell at scale excellent so yeah. well network, you are making you know, amazing we'll progress thank you thank you for your time today i really well, appreciate you. amazing technology well, monroe has been a great partner of ours and uh you know we uh appreciate the uh support thank you hi i'm here with michael van steber he's the ceo of modal motors and michael has got some amazing motor technology that i think our viewers will be super interested mike do you think you could take some time and explain a little bit about this unique technology sure uh, a couple things about our technology is that we're almost zero waste on manufacturing process so what that allows us to do is we uh, number one uh, when someone else stamps a lamination for example they're throwing away everything in the middle of this motor plus everything that doesn't make up the rest of the square so we don't have that this is a slinky wound stator lamination is what they call it so just like the slinky toy yeah it's like there's no waste in doing that these little poles here they're made of pressed powdered metal, somaloy, and even our coils, you see, they, they fill the gap immensely. So that gives us a very hot, high slot fill factor. It's hard to say five times faster. <laughs> but, uh, and so that means efficiency right there too. And also these coils right here, you see they're, they're actually, there's three turns in the coil. There's no inner loop. So it's easy to make these coils by additive means, laser cutting, and a lot of other processes like edge wound coil winding. But that's the that's the hub motor version of it, and then we also are doing these little uh, drone motors. These are 3D printed models, but uh, these little drone motors are transverse flux motors. So okay. it's a different type of uh, electric motor. They have only two coils in these motors, and there's only two stator poles in these motors. So it's super easy to put together, and that's it's a two phase motor with a virtual third phase. So we use the virtual third phase and a trick with the coils to be able to align the rotor for starting every single time. So again, it makes for the lightest motor, highest torque density motor. Also this motor, it, it's got three rotors too. So we have dual axial rotors and a radial rotor. So we're surrounding the stator with magnetic flux. So that's why with non-rare earth magnets, we can exceed the performance of what rare earth magnets can do. Awesome. At much lower cost. So we can beat Chinese prices with fully automated manufacturing here in Detroit. Well, we love that story. Yeah. Excellent. So we're really, really thrilled about it. Um, and all of this comes out of, I've, I've been doing electric motors for about 25 years. And uh, we've, we've been benefit, the beneficiary of about $50, $50 million in previous motor development efforts for other motor companies from the radial flux type that they're using for drones and robots to switch reluctance to axial flux to all these other types of motors. And that's why this motor right here is a totally different animal. And, uh, and we're really looking forward to every single drone and robotics company getting getting this in their hands. So. I think there's a lot of opportunity. Absolutely. I think so too. So we're excited about it. So. Well, I think you should be. Thank every you. every good reason to. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for the explanation. Pleasure, thank you. Sir. Thank and you. all the best. Yep. Hi, we're here with Connor McGaffey from Swarm Defense. So Connor's got some really interesting technology here. I'd like you to give us an overview of what is this specific technology? Yes. And give me the practical use case for this. Yes, so we specialize in swarm technology. We've been in business for about eight years now. Everything you see on the table are drones that are designed by us here in Auburn Hills. All the hardware, software, form, firmware is all designed and built, developed by us. Um, what you have here, these are all our group two, or group one uh, drones here. We specialize in uh, drum swarms. These are our smaller drones. We can fly up to thousands of drones with one okay. pilot off one device. We specialize in quick deployments and just ease of use. Okay. All of our drones are pretty affordable. 
They go for around $1,500 a piece, but these ones specifically are made for our drone light shows on the commercial end. So we can easily bring that price down. Again, we wanna be able to scale and build drones quickly and efficiently. Right now we build about 12,000 drones a year. Um, and that is just on the commercial side. So that's just okay. a need, need basis. Okay. Uh, we can easily pump those numbers up and okay. we're all funded by ourselves, privately funded. We're not, no investments at this moment, but okay. we're looking to take it to the next level. Okay, and this drone is obviously different. So yes. tell me a little bit about this. Yes, so this drone, obviously much bigger, much faster, can carry a much larger payload. Okay. These ones can carry about a two pound payload. We can build any drone to the size that's needed for okay. whatever payload is uh, needed as well. Uh, this one can carry up to eight to 10 pounds. Um, and depending on the battery size can go, this one can go for about three to four minutes, but with that bigger, heavy, heavier battery pack, we can go for about 15 minutes. Okay. But this one's all about speed. It can go up to 130 miles per hour. Okay. And with our flight controllers from these, we can put it right on this and you can have, again, thousands of these going 130 miles per hour doing specific paths that we have pre-programmed. Okay. So it can go very fast. What would be like a standard range? A standard range? That's a good question. Uh, it'd be a couple kilometers. Um, okay. Yeah. So you get there very quickly. Too. Okay. Um, there and then there and back, right? Obviously, it's recoverable, right? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, depending on what your use case is, of, of course. course. Um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, it, for what we're doing right now, we're doing a lot of um, counter UAS testing. So okay. military will hire us to test out some equipment to okay. simulate drone swarms in okay. attacking, and yeah. they're trying to take out the targets and. We're also now on the offensive side, so showing that we can control swarms of drones with the payload, and we're going from there. Perfect. So you said you, you're in Auburn Hills. Correct, yes. So you're our neighbor, so yes. howdy oh, neighbor. Nice That's to meet you. awesome. Yeah. And so where in Auburn Hills? Uh, we're on Updike. Uh, we actually just moved offices there. I'm trying to, I'm struggling on the crossroads okay. right now, but I'm Updike Court there. You're definitely a neighbor. We'll have to just come by and see. Please, for yes, sure. we just moved to a new office, and then we just moved to an office across the street, three okay. times the size. So we're awesome. growing quickly. Okay, yeah. well, it sounds really interesting. Yeah. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much.